Good afternoon, my fellow brothers and sisters. Oh, you're welcome. I actually didn't plan to speak before you, but as long as we were all welcome to share who we are, where we come from, I stand before you as a testament to give testimony that the, of the power of prayer. I'm the mother of a missing and murdered daughter. My daughter, my oldest daughter went missing in August of 1996. We were not given the opportunity to file a missing persons report. And I know it was because she is native. So without the help of the media, the services of even Indian service providers, we had to go it alone, my family and I. We went to Helen back looking for my daughter. We found her. We, after searching, seeking out many, many to try to help find help to look for my daughter. We did 1-800-US-SEARCH, found her last known address was in Chicago, Illinois. And we, um, we pursued that. We went and um, after we got to the medical examiner's office in Chicago, Illinois, we found out that the Minneapolis Police Department knew all along where my daughter was. When we found her, the medical records clerk told me that she could not believe that we were never notified. My daughter went into the medical examiner's office with identification on her. And my address in Minneapolis, Minnesota at the time was listed as her residence. Yet we were never notified. I then realized that my daughter was murdered by the police. And because she was murdered by the police, the medical examiner's office turned her into a white female gave her a different name, and changed her date of birth on her death certificate. <laughs> we sought out many, many to help us. And in 2007, an attorney met with us and told us that his law firm was sent to help my mom. We filed a lawsuit July 1st, 2008 against the Homewood Memorial Gardens in Homewood, Illinois. They had her buried in a potter's field in a tall, tall grass that was never, man never manicured, never taken care. There was broken bottles, beer bottles, and everything laying way back where she was buried. That year, I went to the Sundance at Arbo Looking Horse. They let me put a chair out for her in the memorial. And with the prayers, of all the sun dancers, I know that's what brought her home. In November of 2008, began the litigations to bring my daughter home. We went into three different separate litigations with the, with the cemetery. And on December 8th, 2008, the Cook 
count, a judge in Cook County, in Chicago, Illinois, ordered that my daughter, my daughter's remains be exhumed and returned to the custody of her mother. It didn't, she didn't come to us that quickly. She also, the judge also ordered that she be taken to, back to the medical examiner's office and properly ID'd to be Dalma Elizabeth Hardy. And so they flew, they, we contacted uh, a, 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 a funeral home in uh, Illinois. They picked up my daughter's body. They took her to the medical examiner's office. They properly ID'd her to be my daughter. And they, they put her in a Ziegler tank and they shipped her home. My, um, my um, reservations ambulance service went and picked my daughter's body up in Fargo, North Dakota and drove her home. They brought her to Bemidji and my sister and I greeted her on Christmas Eve day of 2008. So we were able to bury her, give her proper burial in our family burial grounds in my hometown in Panema, Minnesota. I know that if it was not for the power of prayers, that I may not have been able to bring my daughter home. And I want to share with you what the water brought me. I went back home after being gone for 20 years. And when I got back home, I applied for my grandpa's land assignment. And uh, it's awesome, it's so beautiful. Quarter mile back from the main road, our next nearest neighbors are the animals. The bears, the deer, the porcupine, even a skunk greeted me one morning, didn't spray me. <laughs> but I, and then watching the eagles flying overhead, it's the most beautiful thing. And my land assignment is located on the shores of the Red Lake. You see the Red Lake flag up on that Red Lake Nation flag back there. I live in the middle of both lakes. And I walked along the lake shore when I got back home. And I found the pipe, which I brought here today. It's never been used yet, but I know this is of our ancestors. And I brought it here. I'm looking for Arvo. I want to thank him again for allowing me to the opportunity to pray with all those at the Sundance. And I, I know that deep down in my heart that the prayers are more powerful than any gun or any piece of ammunition that anybody thinks they can use on us. And so with all our prayers together, this is going to happen. We will save our water and our land will return back to its original inheritors. And I thank all the nations of people that come here from all around the world. Miigwech, thank you for coming here and standing here. My grandparents, my mother is from Fort Peck Reservation. And my father is Ojibwe from the Red Lake Nation. 
I pride myself with having two warring bloods running through my veins. This makes me very proud. And I'm here with you. I was here with you in spirit before I got here physically. And I'm so happy that I came. And I love every one of you. And I love all our babies. And I'm missing my babies so much right now. And when my friend seen me here, she said, who are you here with? And all I could do was open my arms. We are not here alone. We are all here together. I love every one of you and thank you for taking the time to hear my story. Miigwech. <laughs>